a big brain part near part B. That it. So for now, let's just jump into it and understand how and what we have to do. We have that the formula F equals 1.8 times C plus 32 is used to convert a temperature in degrees Celsius C to degrees Fahrenheit. Makes sense. You plug in, I don't know, C equals 1 and you end up with F equals something. In this case, you end up with F equals 33.8. Okay, so you plug in a Celsius, it gives you a Fahrenheit. Fair game. For part A, a part I, we need to find the formula for, convent, for converting a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. So read carefully. Initially what we had was a formula that would help us convert from Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. And here we need something that converts Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. So notice, in the context of converting from Celsius C two degrees Fahrenheit, you have F equals something something C. And so if we want to go from Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, that means we need to find C equals something something F. When I say something something, it's going to be the 1.8, the plus 32, all that stuff. Okay. So for part AI, the formula we start with is F equals 1.8 times C plus 32. And we basically want to reach a formula where C is alone. So getting C alone from here is fairly simple. Subtract both sides by 32. F minus 32 equals 1.8 C. And to keep getting C alone, you can divide by 1.8 to both sides. So C has to equal, um, actually I'm probably just gonna leave it like that. So F minus 32 divided by 1.8, see? That's probably good enough as we can see over here, there it is, see? F minus 32 divided by 1.8. So that is for part AI. For part A double I, what we encounter is that we need to find the temperature in degrees Celsius that is recorded as 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So essentially, again, read slowly, define your terms with care. Over here, you need to find, what do you need to find? Celsius. Okay. You can basically cross off everything else. Find Celsius. Da da da. 77 Fahrenheit. That's literally all you need. Find Celsius, 77 Fahrenheit. So what is C if my Fahrenheit is 77? That's what it's asking you to find. See? That is what you need to do. And technically from here, just so you know, or just to open up your mind a little bit, you can plug in either in this formula there, the one we started with, or the one down here. They will both give you the answer, it doesn't matter. But in the world of IB, if you have something like part, if you have an exercise with parts like AI and a double I, they're usually very related to each other, see? So part A double I, it's not that you need part AI, but it's much easier with part AI, see? Usually these, these exercises with parts are very, very related and they can be a big hint on how to move forward. In this case, this is literally all you need. So I'm gonna plug that information down here. And so for part A double I, uh, C is something you don't know, so you leave C as C and Fahrenheit F is going to be 77. So C equals 77 minus 32 divided by 1.8. Now, we have our trusty rusty calculator, so we can go ahead, make sure it has batteries, unlike mine. Okay. And I like to put a fraction for these. See, so you can use alpha, y equals, press the first one. You pull out a fraction, you do 77 minus 32, whoops, 77 minus 32, and there we go, uh, divided by 1.8. Go ahead and press enter, pray that it works, 25. So uh, C equals 25 when Fahrenheit equals 77. See? There you go. Yep. And now it starts to get a little bit more juicy. See? Then they tell us that over one year, the mean daily temperature in Mexico City was calculated to be 70 degrees Celsius with a standard deviation ugh, 
of 9 degrees Celsius. Dude, no one likes statistics, statistics, and people like even less standard deviation. But, gotta do what you gotta do. Here we are. See? So the mean is 17 degrees Celsius, while the standard deviation is 9 degrees Celsius. That is basically the information that they're giving us. And so for part AI, all of this, careful, in Fahrenheit, find the mean daily temperature. So part BI is a little bit more friendly. Basically what they're giving us this time is that you have Celsius equals 17 and you don't know what Fahrenheit is. That's what you're trying to find, see? So they ask you to find the mean daily temperature in Mexico City in degrees Fahrenheit and they give us 17 degrees Celsius right here. So that means we have C equals 17. You don't know F, find it. Cierto? So in this case, am I better off plugging into this equation here or that equation there? They both work, but it makes a little bit more sense if I plug it into the first one because in the first one, F is alone. So solving is going to be slightly easier. See? It's not that it's wrong if you use the other one. It's just a thing of like what's easier. See? So um, the formula up top is F equals 1.8C plus 32. So if you go ahead and plug in 17 here, it's 1.8 times 17 plus 32. Put all of that into your calculator, it should look like this. 18 times 17 plus that 32. Yeah. So Fahrenheit, in this case, give me a really big number. Is that okay? Oh, I put 18. <laughs> all right. I'm very glad that happened because first of all, it can happen to anyone. But also, you can constantly be checking your work by questioning your numbers a little bit. See? Of course, you have to trust the process. But hey, we all plug in sometimes incorrectly into the calculator. It just happened to me. It can happen to you. It can happen to anyone. See? So if you end up with a really big number right when before I got an answer of 25, yeah, you're probably off by a little bit. See? So there I plugged in again. Bada bam, bada boom. Uh, Fahrenheit in this case is 62.6. And over here, it's right there. Yeah. So that is for part BI. And for part B double I, we have that the standard deviation of the daily temperature in Mexico City is something that we have to find. See? So for part B double I, what a lot of people would do, which is actually a mistake, and I'm gonna show you now what everyone would do, okay, is that they say, okay, so now for standard deviation. Uh, we have here 9 degrees Celsius, so that means that C equals 9, and we need to find Fahrenheit, right? And so my equation that I'm using is F equals uh, 1.8C plus 32. And so that means that from here I can just plug in 9, ¿cierto? So I can just end up with F equals 1.8 times 9 plus 32. So that means that my Fahrenheit has to be just this thing thing here just that right there we have a 9 and a lot of people would just say ah oh, yeah okay Fahrenheit is 48.2 but I'm boom I'm done see now this is incorrect and it's very very particular why it's incorrect see so on the one hand um it's partly incorrect okay it's I mean, it is incorrect, sorry, because of how the, the, the standard deviation works, see? So what is standard deviation? What is actually happening here, see? So let's go over these terms for a bit. For a bit. That it? And actually, in the answer key here, it says, recognize that the plus 32 does not affect standard deviation. Now, why would it not affect standard deviation is what I will explain now. So this is incorrect because you should be doing this calculation without 32. That it? Now, why is that the case? Let me explain it this way. Dale. Technically, okay, technically, your mean is the same as like your average. Okay, so that is a little bit more intuitive to understand. Dale. While your standard deviation, I suggest that you rec recognize it more as like your spread. Okay, the spread of your data. If you have a very high standard deviation, that means your data is very spread out. If you have a very small standard deviation, your data is very like compact together, etc. 
okay so having that in mind okay having that in mind imagine I have this scatter plot right here see which has I don't know these points of data all right if I were to for example do a plus three to all of these cierto? that means that my new points end up something like this cierto? they're all a little bit higher up right makes sense so how would the mean change the mean would change because all the values in red are much higher than the values in black cierto? so the values in red for the mean would go up if you do plus three the average is bigger it makes sense cierto? but what about standard deviation if you do if you do plus three, if you do plus three to each, cierto? you do plus three to each, does the spread of your data increase or decrease? It's actually the same. The spread of the points in black between each other is the same as the spread of the points in red. Cierto? They're not anywhere closer or farther than each other than what they were before. So the main idea here is that when you're looking at standard deviation, you only care about it changing if you multiply, ¿cierto? If you do plus three, if you add or subtract by something, your spread is not gonna change. But if you multiply by something, then your spread will change, ¿cierto? Because if from here you do, I don't know, like whatever, like times 100, ¿cierto? Imagine you're doing times 100. There, your, your mean would definitely change, ¿cierto? But it's also interesting. Imagine you have a point of data that's over there, ¿cierto? So if you do times 100, all these values will go, like, way higher, ¿cierto? But some of your values, and here's the main point, some of your values will go way farther up than others if you multiply by 100. Because if your data is, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if you do plus 3 to all of them, you end up with 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ¿cierto? So here it makes sense that your mean is going to get bigger, but your spread is still the same. There's still a difference of 1 between all of these. But, so this is the case of plus 3, ¿cierto? But if you do times 2, what does it end up like? You end up with 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And in this case, yes, the mean went up, but so did the spread. If before they were spread out between each other by one, which is the same as when we added plus three, it was still spread out by one. Here, it's spread out by two. So, ah, uh, when you multiply, your standard deviation is going to change, but adding or subtracting does not change your standard deviation. So over here, for part B double I, for part B double I, basically, yes, you have to use this equation there, but you don't care about the plus 32, because adding or subtracting does not change your spread. If you add or subtract, your spread will remain the same. The spread only changes if you multiply. So in this case, the plus 32 is something you actually have to ignore. So you go ahead and plug into this equation, which is F equals 1.8 times C, without the plus 32. Without the plus 32. So F has to equal 1.8 times 9. So F equals Hello, F equals, thank you, 1.8 times 9 without the 32, Fahrenheit equals 16.2, see? So a little bit of a longer explanation of how standard deviation works. It was a very particular question. I don't tend to see that in the IB tests, but hey, here it was, and I think it was worth two points. So worth knowing how to solve it, see? Um... So yeah, there it is, 16.2, 16.2. Ladies, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is, for number eight, not that complicated except for the last, last part. See, so I hope you, I hope you learned something, and I hope it helped.